Concerned Ape has packed so many updates into Stardew Valley 1.6. Here are 10 changes that every player absolutely needed. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please help my channel grow and just hit that subscribe button. It's free of charge and it just means you won't miss out on tons more Stardew Valley content that's coming your way. Let's talk about the new UI updates here. These interfaces are absolutely amazing. The new character interface will tell you if you're aligned with Georgia or if you're aligned with the community center and will even give you a progress report on it. It will also tell you what level your house is, how far you've ventured into the Skull Cavern. We're on floor 100 there, that's how far we got. And how many star drops you have acquired so far. It also has a really cool pet UI as well. We have Pongo. As we can see, he's the happiest dog that has ever roamed Pelican Town. We also have another really cool UI that will showcase all of the books of power. Next up, let's talk about multiple pets. In order to get multiple pets, the first thing you need is a pet bowl. You can purchase one of these off Robin. The great thing about pet bowls is that there's loads of different types of pet bowls you can choose from. Now, they all cost the same, 5,000 gold and some hardwood. But the best part about these pet bowls is that when you place it down, Robin will build it instantly. As she says, it comes prefabricated. <laughs> You can place as many pet bowls down as you wish. I think the fact that you can change between different types of pet bowls will give players really nice options to match their own farm aesthetic, especially depending on what kind of roads you have on your farm or what kind of lands you're using. Once the pet bowls have been placed, all we have to do then is just go on down to Marley. But the first thing we need is our original pet with maxed out hearts. Once that is achieved, Marnie will send us a mail and it just basically says that she's really happy that her pet is doing well and if we come down to her ranch we can purchase more pets from her once we sort out the whole licensing. So let's make our way down to Marnie right now and see what kind of pets she has in store for us. Marnie has a huge array of pets we can choose from. She has the cutest cats, she has dogs, she even has some exotic pets, she has turtles. So we have a green emerald looking turtle there for 60,000. We also have an iridium turtle for 500,000 gold. Let's purchase the iridium turtle, we're going to call him Zygarde. Send him off to our farm and let's see him waddle around like the cute turtle he is. We cannot buy as many pets off Marnie as we have pet bowls. Because we have two pet bowls, we can go ahead and purchase a second pet off Marnie, no problem. That pet will appear on our farm instantaneously, so we can stock up on pets very quickly if we wish, because Robin will make the pet bowls instantaneously, and Marnie can give us the pets instantaneously as well, as long as we have the funds to cover the licensing. As we can see, we've got the cats there, they're super cool just walking around and we have the turtle over here on the left he's just up there he's a little bit shy let's just run into him a few times to see if we can make him move there we go how cool is that turtle pets would you like to see a farm filled up to the top with turtles i sure would next up let's talk about the ginger island map praise yoba this was needed since 1.5 got released years ago we never had a Ginger Island map, but now we do, and you can see your location on it. For people that are new to Ginger Island, this map will help you navigate the terrain. If you're quite experienced like me, it won't make much of a difference, but it's still really nice to finally have a map of this whole region. Ginger Island is a very mystical place. It's full of secrets, so a map will absolutely help, especially if you get stuck and you want to find out where certain golden walnuts are. Next up, let's talk about grass in winter. How many of you have tried to harvest all of your grass in fall before it disappears? How many of you have tried to purchase silo after silo off Robin and fill it up to the top to save money? But now you don't have to worry too much. The grass will carry over into winter. The only thing to note is that it won't give you the same yields as it would if you harvest it in spring, summer or fall. So if you use the scythe in winter, you get slightly less hay. We're now going to talk about the NPC Winter Clothes. There are hundreds of Stardew Valley mods that you can get for this game that will change the way NPCs look. I mean, you can get it to look like straws, you can get it to look like demons, you can get it to look like enemy characters. But the one thing I always wanted Concerned Ape to do was to put clothes on these NPCs to match what season we're in. Now, he has made a bit of progress and he has put some nice winter clothes on the NPCs, which is absolutely great to see. Each NPC has their very own winter clothing 
and it all looks super cozy, super comfy, and I think they just suit them quite well. So it is very impressive to see. Next up, we are going to talk about praise the Lord coal nodes. They were needed for so long. Now the quarry actually has a proper purpose. I won't be making tree farms up here anymore. I'll just believe the nodes grow back and just come up here to farm coal whenever I need it. Coal is something that's needed all the time. Needed for smelting bars. And the amount of bars you go through, especially when you're going for perfection, is insane. You can also get coal nodes inside the volcano cave as well, which is super handy. So let's talk about moving the farmhouse. Yes, we can now move our actual main structure anywhere we want on the farm. This is going to make for great farm customizations. Everybody, including myself, obviously had this vision of the perfect farm in their mind. We can surely now go ahead and make that happen because we can now move basically anything around the farm, any structure, no problem at all. Thanks to Robin, of course, and Concerned Ape. <laughs> Good teamwork. Next up, let's talk about the farm computer. So in 1.5, a farm computer was introduced and it's a really handy piece of kit that will basically tell you if there's any actions you need to take on your farm. Some information here includes how many pieces of hay you have in your silos, total crops you have, crops ready to be harvested, unwatered crops, etc. But the thing about the farm computer is that it could never leave the actual farm. You couldn't use it over on Ginger Island. You couldn't use it in the mines. You couldn't use it in the quarry if you had a setup there. You couldn't use it in the desert if you had a setup there. But that's now changed. Demetrius has dramatically increased his coding knowledge, and you can now use the computer anywhere in the game. It will lock onto any structures or equipment you have in that desired room, and it will give you the stats no problem at all. Let's take a look at our fabulous computer here over on Ginger Island. It will give us a lowdown straight away on the crops, unwatered crops, machines, and everything else. It's going to be such a game changer to have one of those in all of the zones that we're doing our fabulous farming operations in. Now, I know many people who play Stardew Valley don't like Georgia, but in all fairness, they're not that bad. Concerned Ape absolutely loves Georgia. He's a huge fan. He's always buffing them. Let's take a look at the new and improved Georgia Cola. Let's all thrive together here, people, because we now have access to a drink that we can get from day one that will give us a speed buff. That's right. Georgia Cola will now give us a plus one to speed. Now, the buff doesn't last for too long. It lasts for 21 seconds, but I can tell you right now, if you need to get from the beach back to your bed and you have less than an hour to do so, the Georgia Cola will save your wallet. Trust me on that. It is going to be an absolute lifesaver of a drink. You can fish this up from any sort of water. You can get it down in Florida hundreds in the mines. You can get it in the river. You can get it over in Ginger Island. It's going to be the handiest thing now to pull out of the water, especially if it's really late. you got to get around quick. The Georgia Cola has been enhanced. Skull Cavern hard mode. Here we go. So in 1.5, uh, Skull Cavern Invasion was released to the game. And it basically made the Skull Cavern much harder. Harder enemies. You can also get radioactive ores inside the Skull Cavern as well. But now Concerned Ape has added a little console there, just to the right of the entrance, that will allow you to toggle the Skull Cavern invasion on and off at your own leisure. Now obviously you have to pick up the quest first in Key Secret Walnut Room, but once you have the quest completed, that console will appear, and you can toggle it on and off whenever you wish. Just a huge thanks to all my channel members. Thanks so much everyone for your support, and I'll see you very soon in the next video.